In this corner, we have Timothy the turkey, and in this corner, we have Scott, the sockeye salmon. Have you ever seen a turkey in a salmon fight? Okay, you either laughed or you unsubscribed, but you're still here, so here we go. What I wanna talk about today are going to be the best kinds of protein to break a fast. Making it simple, okay? Obviously, protein is protein. I want you to get your protein at the end of a fast. It's the most important thing, okay? So please don't get me wrong. Like, if you just have some beef laying around, I'm not gonna be opposed to it, but might as well give you the best for when you make a good decision, right? Turkey, let's start there for a second. Turkey is great for a longer fast, okay? And I'll get into the nitty gritty details of it in just a minute, but essentially it has to do with the phosphorus, which can become very depleted after you break a longer fast. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna circumnavigate all this and give you the details on like how much and stuff in just a second. Then we have the fish side. Not just any fish, it really needs to be a fish that is richer in omega-3s, but not just any fish, it generally needs to be a fish that is richer in omega-3s. But I like fish to begin with because it's usually a protein that's relatively easy to assimilate and just high quality stuff, okay? This is going to be better for like shorter fasts where maybe you want to stop the fast immediately and not have the muscle wasting effect that can happen when you're fasting. That's right. So when you're fasting, you are really teetering on the edge of being in a catabolic state. Well, you are in a catabolic state, but you're teetering on the edge of losing muscle, right? So when you break your fast, you want to stop the muscle wasting or potential for muscle wasting as quickly as you can. Okay, where the interesting science comes into play has to do with omega-3s. Okay, so omega-3s are fascinating because they seem to have an impact on muscle protein synthesis. So the last thing you want at the end of a fast is to not have muscle protein synthesis. Okay, you want to stop the fast and you immediately want to get into the point where your body is rebuilding and repairing. Okay, very black and white. Fasting, not fasting. And the quickest way that we can stop that fasting period is by having good quality protein synthesis and overall anabolic signaling. Now, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition had published a paper that demonstrated that omega-3s stimulated protein synthesis and may help prevent against sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle wasting. Okay, cool stuff. But then there was a study on the contrary published in physiology reports that demonstrated, well, hey, in elite athletes, we didn't notice any change when omega-3s were added. Okay, so we're in a little bit of a deadlock there. So does it really matter? Well, you start investigating potential mechanisms and you see, ah, okay, maybe there is something else going on here. You see, we used to think that omega-3s played a role in what was called mTOR phosphorylation, and they still might, but it's so nebulous. The world of nutrition and biochemistry is so nebulous, it's so difficult, right? So with mTOR phosphorylation, what you're suggesting is that the omega-3s are triggering an mTOR response which is quite literally the opposite of autophagy. So when you're fasting, you have autophagy occurring, cellular recycling, breakdown, all this. mTOR is the opposite. It's where you have pro-growth signaling, okay? You want mTOR, right, when you break a fast because you're literally breaking a fast. Okay, well, it turns out that that maybe isn't the case. We don't know. What might be a more viable reason is the membrane fluidity. So research have been seeing that there is an increase in the amino acid uptake clearance into a muscle cell when omega-3s are present. What this could mean is that because omega-3s have been demonstrated to increase what's called membrane fluidity, they basically make a cell membrane, a muscle cell membrane, softer and gooier and just easier to communicate with. Well, when that happens, that cell is more receptive to anabolic signaling to pro-growth signaling or protein synthesis signaling. It can receive a signal better. It's like the difference between you standing there with open arms to greet somebody or you standing there like this, right? It's more accepting of a signal. So maybe it's mTOR related, maybe it's signal related. Either way, very powerful for a shorter term and a longer term, but mainly in this case, a shorter term fast. So if you have the opportunity to break a fast with fish, I would definitely suggest it. I just know it's not always realistic. I know you don't want to microwave a bunch of salmon in front of your wife or you'll end up sleeping on the patio. Wait, that's what happened to me. Anyway, you don't want to do that, right? I will say if you're in a pinch, there is a company called Wild Planet. Wild Planet is super awesome and you can get them through Thrive Market. So they have sardines, you could use sardines, but if we get a little bit tastier, they also have skipjack tuna. 
Okay, Skipjack tuna has 20 grams of protein per three ounces. So very protein rich and 204 milligrams of docosahexaenoic acid DHA, which is a very good omega-3 per three ounce serving as well. So Wild Planet is super cool because they're huge on sustainability. Okay, everything is pole or line cut or sometimes troll caught. In the case of their skipjack, it's like a really soft tuna that seems to assimilate very well. So even though it doesn't seem like it's one of these super rich omega-3 salmons or sardines, it's still got a decent amount of omega-3s. It's caught right off the coast of Cape Verde in Africa. Really good, ethically sourced stuff. This stuff is very sustainable. So the skipjack and these little five ounce cans Super easy, super convenient. They also have them in glass jars. They also have sardines. They have a bunch of different stuff. Anyway, check them out down below in the description. So that's a solution for you if you're on the go, right? You can have tuna, you can have something like that and still get those omega-3s in. I think that's just perfect for the regular, casual, everyday faster. Now what about turkey? Timothy the turkey, he is a heck of a fighter because he really helps you out when it comes down to these longer fasts. And when I mean longer fasts, I mean maybe 20, 24, 30 hours, right? If you're more seasoned, then maybe longer fasts. Why is turkey so important? Okay, first of all, super high protein, very low saturated fat. The longer the fast, the more important it is that you keep saturated fat out of the breaking the fast meal. Saturated fat is harder to digest, okay? You don't have as much enzyme potential, it's harder to break down, and there is some evidence that saturated fats can end up disrupting the microbiome if you have too much of it or if you're in kind of an unstable situation like at the end of a fast. So keep it very lean. Turkey, exceptionally lean, exceptionally high in turkey breast, the protein to fat ratio. Exactly what we're after here. Here's where the kicker is. This is the important piece. Phosphorus. Turkey is exceptionally high in phosphorus. And when you break a longer fast, your phosphorus levels tend to decline. So there was a study that was published in the journal Medicina Clinica that looked at just this. And it found that people that were breaking a fast during refeeding, what's called refeeding syndrome, which is where you have a massive rush of minerals that come out of the serum, but out of the blood into the cell, okay? So that triggers this weird gradient and can drop electrolyte and mineral values. Phosphorus is going into the cell, it's kind of disrupting things. That's a problem for protein synthesis and for anabolism because phosphorus is an important cofactor in protein synthesis. So for the same reason that I had suggested you should be focusing on fish and having protein synthesis with a shorter fast, turkey is very important for the proper protein synthesis after a longer fast. You have two different directions that you can go when you break that fast, okay? If phosphorus levels decline, you either A, don't have enough phosphorus to handle the muscle protein synthesis, which you're probably gonna have some, you're not gonna be that depleted, but you never know. Or you're gonna run into a situation where what phosphorus you do have is allocated towards muscle protein synthesis, leaving you with dangerously low levels in the bloodstream otherwise. So either way, getting phosphorus in through poultry, you can use chicken too, but I like turkeys, it's a little bit leaner, generally, generally cleaner when you look at the big picture compared to turkey to chicken. Okay. But there's one other thing, thiamine, okay, vitamin B1, which turkey has, okay. If you're going to have carbohydrates after you break a fast, you need to restore vitamin B levels because this is another one of those thiamine kind of issues. A thiamine deficiency can happen after a longer fast. So turkey for fasts over 24 hours is the ideal protein. Fish under 24 hours for regular casual fasting is the ideal option. Doesn't mean you have to, but if you can make a good choice, I think it'll help in the long run. I'll see you tomorrow.